For most cattlemen and women, this past winter was one of the toughest in many years. And that means a lot of hay was used to keep cows in good condition. When it comes to producing hay this year, many producers will be looking to maximize production and quality. One way to improve hay quality is by properly conditioning your hay crop. For more on the keys to producing high quality hay, we turn to Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter. The Imperial Valley of California is known worldwide for the quality of alfalfa it produces. Alfalfa hay is prized because of the high levels of energy, protein, and nutrients it provides to cattle. But if you want to increase the feed value of your alfalfa and other hay crops, the experts say you should be conditioning that crop properly when you cut it. Well, it's a really crucial step in hay or haylage making, but particularly for hay. Uh, first, if we condition properly and spread it into a wide swath, we get the initial moisture loss to be less and therefore we preserve the uh, fermentable carbohydrates and improve the nutrition. The second thing, of course, is that uh, we get the hay dried sooner so that uh, when we're in harvesting, we don't have as much yield loss from the next cutting. And then the third thing would be that in some parts of the country, getting it off the field a day sooner means we're less likely to get rained on. In fact, the time of day you choose to cut your crop is a factor in ultimate hay quality. We do know that when we cut in the afternoon, we have more starch and sugars in the plant, and that again makes it more palatable to animals and makes it higher quality. Uh, whether or not we cut in the afternoon depends on how fast we can get that initial drying to occur. And so if we're in the western states where drying is good, then cutting in the afternoon is a good idea because it will increase the sugar in the harvested forage. If we're in the eastern states, then if we cut in the afternoon, we have more sugar, but it doesn't dry as much by nightfall, so we lose it before we make hay and, and the benefit is negligible. So in the west, cutting in the afternoon is preferred, in the eastern United States, probably in the morning. While moisture is seldom an issue in the Imperial Valley, in most areas of the country getting the crop dried, baled, and out of the field more quickly benefits quality. So rapid drying, losing that first 15 percent moisture is crucial because that helps shut down respiration and preserves the starch and sugars for the animals that we're feeding. Uh, what this means to us is, is twofold. Uh, first off, in terms of selling hay, uh, well, the prices that we've seen over winter, a 4% starch loss would be about a $40 per ton premium discount in California and would be a $60 or $70 discount for hay in the Midwestern United States. The other thing to keep in mind, though, is that it's important for dairy, but it's also important for beef cattle. With the kind of winter that we had, if we had that extra quality, we could have fed the cattle quality hay to help them get through that cold weather without the need for supplemental grain and still have maintained the body condition on those animals that we want for calving in the spring. So what can you do to influence the quality of your hay? First, recognize that setting up your mower conditioner to create a wider swath leads to faster dry down. A wide swath is really the single most important factor for drying for haylage and even for hay because a wide swath um, spreads the forage out so that it intercepts more sunlight. It keeps the stomates or the holes in the leaves open so that they lose their moisture faster. And then conditioning, of course, is important for drying the stems. So a wide swath is for drying the leaves. Conditioning is for drying the stems. So New Holland offers a wide dry conditioning module in our new disc bind series. Uh, it's 125 inches wide and it is the widest in the industry and we're excited to unveil that. Um, and really why is that important? It creates a nice smooth mat of crop coming out the, the, the rear of the machine and thorough conditioning is the key here. Being able to cut at 13 or 16 foot 3 and then push that crop back through uh, 125 inches of conditioning uh, provides a nice thorough conditioning job. In addition, producers can choose New Holland's wide thin fin kit to help make dry down happen more quickly. On our smaller side pool cutting machines, we offer a kit called wide thin fin. Uh, 
And what that kit does is it, we basically take off the, um, the windrow shields, take off the side deflectors on the swath gate, and basically mount fins underneath the swath gate itself so that uh, the, the crop can be basically swathed at a measurable distance greater than the cutting. So nine foot two or 10 foot uh, cutting machines, we like to see the swaths be wider than, than uh, the cutting widths themselves. If you can get it right around 70 to 80, maybe even 90% of uh, cutting width, uh, spreading that crop wide and thin will promote dry down. It will promote uh, the sun exposure and it will also help uh, the wind to come in and dry down that crop and taking that moisture level down from the 80% down to that you know 50 and then down to 13% is really something that uh, we look forward to. In addition to a wide swath, recognize that there are a variety of choices you can make when it comes to the tools that will condition your hay crop. So New Holland offers three effective crop uh, conditioning solutions for uh, the general hay customer, hay and forage owner. And really on our disc bind, we offer three uh, solutions for that. Number one is the Chevron rubber intermeshing rolls. And really that, that rubber roll is good for the alfalfa type crop, the soft legumes, something that has leaves. It really provides a good crimp and crush crop conditioning. Uh, with those rubber rolls and going through there provides a really good uh, opportunity for the moisture to uh, escape and, and help with the respiration process so that you can get the dry down that you're looking for. The second type of uh, effective conditioning that New Holland offers is called our leaning edge flails and New Holland offers that on all of our disc bind series and basically uh, the reason that you wanted to use the flail type conditioning is going to be for more of a, of, a, of a grass type hay, something uh, where it's much more aggressive. Um, guys use them to really help to promote the dry down. It's probably the, the most effective type of conditioning, but it's also the most uh, forceful type of conditioning as well. The third type of conditioning that we offer in our disc binds is a steel and steel intermeshing roll. And that really is gonna be for more of a cane or a grass type crop as well. Uh, it does do a really nice and thorough job Whatever choice you make to condition your crop, you also need to take the time to check and look closely to ensure you're getting the effect you want. So when we're conditioning hay, we should uh, adjust close to what we think is appropriate and then mow around and get off and look at what that hay looks like after we have mowed that one round. And we should see a couple things. One is we should see one to 5% of the leaves showing some bruising or some slight turning of color. The other thing is we should be able to see that the stems are broken every three to four inches. The, the bruising and the stem breakage will tell us that we've got enough tension on our conditioner that we're properly conditioned that alfalfa both for the type and the amount of forage going through. So that means that the crop that's going through your conditioning rolls or conditioning flails uh, is going to get a nice thorough conditioning so that uh, really when you're looking at the moisture loss it, it really helps the hay to dry down quickly and so that you can get uh, your baling operation underway. The sooner you can do that, the more digestible your hay is going to be and that goes right into the diet of the animal that you're trying to feed. Adjusting and operating the mower and the conditioner in an appropriate manner is really crucial to producing high quality hay, which is profitable to the beef cattleman, the dairyman, the hay, commercial hay grower and everyone else involved. The experts also say producers should be sure to set the appropriate roll gap and roll pressure to provide the conditioning they want for the crop they're cutting. Be sure to ask your local dealer to review conditioner setting with you prior to season to ensure you have the information to be successful. From the Imperial Valley of California, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Now remember, New Holland offers outstanding discounts for NCBA members. To find out more, visit the website beefusa.org or stop in at your local New Holland dealer.